Welcome to Contacts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at fair value versus the revaluation model. And this would be IIS 40 versus IIS 16. There's usually confusion as to which is which, fair value versus revaluation model. Or sometimes some may use it interchangeably, thinking that they actually mean the same thing, but they actually don't. As you can see here, that fair value we are referring to IIS 40 and revaluation model we are referring to IIS 16. Okay, and you know that those are different things that we are dealing with. So we're briefly going to look at that and show the differences so that you can clearly be able to see which one is which and also be able to understand them individually in this lesson. Now, we've done lessons on specifically these two models on separate lessons and we go into details as to how you account for them. So you'll find the links to those lessons in the description below. So firstly, what is the fair value model? Well, the fair value model applies to investment property and if you know your standards you know investment property is IAS 40 and is revalued every reporting period with gains or losses going through to profit or loss and there is no depreciation in this case so by that you already know that if you're looking at fair value or the fair value model your mind should automatically go to IAS 40 and not to IAS 16 PPE and that's where the mistake usually is okay so the fair value model specifically applies to IAS 40 and under IAS 40 it's specific to investment property and what do we do if you're using the fair value model under IAS 40 it means that you have to revalue that class of asset or your classes of assets that are using the fair value model every reporting period okay so at the end of every period you have to see what is the fair value of these assets okay and the gains or the losses based on what the fair value is is going straight to profit or loss so under the fair value model you don't have oci okay? does not go into other comprehensive income furthermore if you're using the fair value model there is no depreciation you will not depreciate your assets okay so fair value model applies to is 40. what about revaluation model well of course i'm sure you already know that it applies to is 16 as we've alluded to so the revaluation model applies to property plant and equipment otherwise known as PPE and this would be IAS 16 where the asset is revalued periodically remember not necessarily every reporting period this is periodically and the depreciation continues to be charged on the revalued amount and so you can see the glaring differences here fair value model investment property IAS 40 revaluation model PPE IAS 16 and you can see the difference as well here where the asset is revalued periodically it doesn't necessarily have to be every reporting period when an event happens that necessitates you to revalue your asset this could be internal events or external events then you would do so it doesn't have to wait for the end of the reporting period or it doesn't have to be at the end of every reporting period as with the fair value model and if you choose to use the revaluation model Model, you will continue to depreciate your asset based on the revalued amount and if you'd like to understand more on that you can check out the lesson specifically on the revaluation model here we just want to show you the differences between the two now here are a few things that you need to remember regarding the fair value model and the revaluation model both IAS 40 and IAS 16 also allows for the option to use the cost model okay so that's one thing you have to take note of even though fair value model applies to IAS 40 it also allows you to use the cost model so the fair value model is not the only model that is used under is 40 and the same is true for is 16 i'm sure you should already know this that it's not only the revaluation model in fact the most common model under is 16 is the cost model so you just need to remember that that both standards allow for the cost model as well however under is 40 once a valuation model is chosen it must be applied consistently to all investment property within the same class. Very important. Once you have chosen to either use the fair value model, which is IS40, of course, or the cost model, you must use that same model. You must apply it consistently to all investment property within the same class. And we'll give you an example here to show you what we mean by same class. If you have, for instance, office buildings, then all your office buildings must use the same model. So if you have, let's say, five office buildings, you can't choose to use fair value model on three of the buildings and the other two buildings you use the cost model the standard does not allow you to do that if you have office buildings 
all your office buildings must be using the same valuation model. And as I've mentioned, of course, office buildings is one of them, but different classes would be something like office buildings or retail buildings. So you might have buildings, but some are designated as office buildings and others as retail buildings. And so if you have chosen the fair value model for office buildings, all your office buildings, as I've mentioned, must use the same valuation model. Otherwise, for the other buildings, let's say the retail buildings, you can use the cost model. So you may use different different models for different classes. However, when you look at IIS 16, you'll realize that it's much more stricter than IIS 40. Why is that? Well, under IIS 16, if you apply the revaluation model, it must apply to the entire class of assets. For example, all buildings and not just some. And so there's the difference here. You might be asking yourself, well, remember with IIS 40, if you've classified some buildings as office buildings and others as retail buildings, you have the option to use the fair value model for the retail buildings as I've just mentioned and the cost model for the office buildings, for instance, if you want to do that. Okay, that's under IIS 40. However, when you come to IIS 16, if you have office buildings and retail buildings and of course they have to be owner occupied for it to be PPE and IS 16 and not investment property all your buildings must use the same valuation model. That's where the strictness comes. With IIS 40, if you've classified some buildings differently to others, then you can use different models for the different classifications. However, for IIS 16, all your buildings, regardless of how you've classified some of the buildings, as long as they are buildings, all of them must use the same valuation model. The same is true if there were vehicles, all your vehicles must use the same valuation model. If you're looking at equipment, all your equipment must use the same valuation model. That's under IIS 16. I hope that clarifies that. No mixing models within a class of PPE, as is the case with IIS 40. So in summary, IIS 40 and IIS 16 allows for the cost model as well, over and above the fair value model for IIS 40 and the revaluation model for IIS 16. However, the strictness is different. With IS40, you might have buildings, but within that, if they're classified differently, you can use different valuation model within the different classifications. However, with IS16, as long as they are buildings, regardless of how they're classified, you will have to use the same valuation model. And one more thing to note here, you cannot switch between models unless there is a justified change in accounting policy. Now that takes you to IIS 8. So that's also important, okay? So if you want to switch between models, you must have a justified change. And what is a justified change? Well, that's where IIS 8 comes into the picture. And you'll find the link to that lesson in the description below. Now that we've noted that, let's look at the summary of the difference between fair value model and the revaluation model. Here we go. What I want you to do is to pause the video, attempt to write down for each of them IIS 40 fair value model and IIS 16 revaluation model. What is it applicable to under each? What is the value? valuation basis, where do the gains and losses go, what about depreciation, is it applicable, what about the change in, in the model, what about an alternative option, and the consistency rule. So you can pause the video, attempt it, and see how well you've understood the theory we've looked at in the first slide, and then you can press play and gauge yourself. Go ahead and do that. Okay, I hope you've attempted it. So let's look at what it's applicable to. IIS 40 fair value model, we've already mentioned this, that's easy, it's applicable to investment property. What about revaluation model IS16? Of course, that would be PPE, property, plant, and equipment. And the valuation basis, well, fair value at each reporting date. Remember that IS40, at each reporting date, you must determine the fair value. And for IS16, periodic revaluation to fair value. Okay, remember, when necessary for you to do that, you need to do that, not necessarily at each reporting date, as we've looked at earlier. And the gains and losses, where do the gains and losses go to? Well, there are two options here. It should be either OCI or profit or loss. And so for IS40 fair value model, we know it's always going to be in profit or loss. Okay, so you don't have the option for OCI under fair value model in IAS40. And under IS16 revaluation model, usually in other comprehensive income. But there are some exceptions to that where you have it applicable to profit or loss. And that will go into more detail when we look at IAS16 as I alluded to earlier. It's in the link in the description below. Okay, but th this is the general rule. Uh, IS40 profit or loss and IS16 revaluation model are usually in other comprehensive income. But there are times 
times where it goes into the profit or loss. But we're not going to go into that in this lesson. We just wanted to show you the differences. What about depreciation? Do we have depreciation under IS-40 fair value model? Well, I hope you already know this. No, we don't. No depreciation for the fair value model under IS-40. And under IS-16, revaluation model, of course, we mentioned this earlier. It's calculated based on the revalued amount. What about the change in the model? When can we change the model? Well, under IS-40, it's allowed only with justified changes per IAS 8 and under IAS 16, same thing. It's allowed only with justified change as per IAS 8. What about alternative options? Do we have alternative valuation model? Yes, we do. We've mentioned that just at the end of the last slide, you can choose the cost model instead if you don't want to use the fair value model. What about IAS 16? Same thing applies. You can choose the cost model instead. And the consistency rule, do you have to apply it to all investment property? Well, under IAS 40, apply consistently to all investment property within the same class as we've looked at earlier and explained thoroughly and under IS 16 apply consistently to the entire class of property plant and equipment so if it's buildings all buildings must use the same valuation model if it's vehicles all vehicles must use the same valuation model and i'm sure you've understood this by now Hope this lesson was helpful. Hope you now have a very good grasp of the difference between fair value model and the revaluation model and even some differences between IS-40 and IS-16, although this was just a difference between the two valuation models. If you have, consider subscribing to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. If you're a member, if you go to our Dropbox folder, you'll be able to find this presentation, as well as a question paper based on exactly what we've gone through, where you can answer them, and a memorandum is also available where you can mark yourself and see how well you've understood to this lesson. Till next time. Cheers.